My last album was about Emelina's story. There's yes. something called the Agrarian Reform Law. This happened in 61. This is their official reform of land ownership, where you cannot own land after a certain amount of time. The rest of it belongs to its workers. And so the workers are now owners of this land. Mm. Here's the thing, though. Emelina, her family, lived on the property. Mm. They didn't own the land. The government came with their giant pamphlet and said, here is the piece of the pie you're entitled to. And her father said, no. I don't feel comfortable taking what doesn't belong to me when I've lived on this land perfectly comfortably. I mean, I have a house. Right. I can feed my family. No, I, I reject your offer to take from this owner. Yeah. And that is what put him on their radar. That is when they started to spy on him and harass him. And then in response to that, Florencio, Emelina's dad, joins an anti-Castro group. Right. Because his kind of political confusion becomes now, wait a minute, this is unjust. What you're right. doing to me. You're harassing me because I turned down an offer. And Emelina was also offered, they wanted Emelina because she was a child prodigy with writing. The Cuban government came with their big pamphlet and said, we want you to be at the front of our children's revolutionary movement. Like, we want you to travel with us throughout the island, mm -hmm. wear the military outfit, and be the poster face, child, literally. The poster child <laughs> of <Literally>. our movement. <laughs> right. Yeah. And Emelina, at the age of, this was probably, she must have been 14 or 15, said no. But why did she say no? Did she have a complex understanding of the sociopolitical situation in Cuba? No. She was loyal to her father. Mm. And that, that relationship within a family is the exact thing that Fidel Castro wanted to eliminate from Cuba. And it's why at the age of 15, you're ordered to do mandatory military time. When you're of age, you're taken out of your home and you're now a part of the military. What's the best way to, to brainwash someone? Through education or through the military. So how are you going to get an entire youth to be patriotic about the revolution? Put them in the army. Yeah, make, wow. them, fight, make them fight for it. Yeah, so she said no to that. And what happens, she becomes a part of her father's group. Her father didn't want her to be a part of it, but she was not going to be denied. Right. She was very loyal to her dad, and she wanted to go wherever her dad went. And when they started arresting all the people in his group, they were next. And, and I say this in the album. They arrested Florencio and Emelina on the same day, and they took them to the same prison, but they separated them. They put Emelina in solitary, and they were interrogating her throughout a couple of hours and days, telling her that they were beating her dad, that her dad had already betrayed her, that her dad had told everything, and she didn't believe him. Mm. They were trying to get information because uh, her dad was a captain in this group. Mm. And what they do to captains in Cuba of anti-Castro groups is they shoot them. What? El Paredón is what it's called. It's the firing squad wall. Wow. Um, still to this day, probably drenched with blood. They, were, they wanted to give Florencio the wall. They wanted to shoot him because they had an idea that he was involved in this group. But Emelina, at 15 years old, before she was arrested, she saw the Jeeps circling her neighborhood. She went and found all those papers that indicated her dad as captain and burned them. So they could never find anything to tie back to her dad to execute him. The only way they could do it is if they got it out of her and they right. never could. And because of that, they decided, and this is the difficult part of the story, uh -huh. they decided they were going to get a group of five guards and just they were going to rape her. And so they, they brought her out of her cell to take her to the interrogation room. They made another turn and they put her in a room and she said they locked her in the room and she saw like five kind of masked figures and she said, that was the night I lost my innocence. Mm. After that, she still said nothing. She did five years in a Cuban prison uh, and her husband, Angel Pardo, the first uh -huh. album I did was about him. It's funny wow. how, how, it's, ah. how it's book ended. He did 24 years, 19 of them in underwear because he didn't want to accept the uh, common prisoner clothes. Wow. They had regular clothes for common prisoners right. and political prisoner clothes. And one of the things the Cuban uh, government wanted to do was they wanted to rehabilitate the political prisoners into thinking of themselves as criminals. So they'd have them dress in blue, which was everybody else's clothes. But Angel's group, Emelina's husband, right. they weren't married at the time. They didn't even know each other. He was a part of a group called Los Plantados. Mm -hmm. And this group said, screw you, we'll go naked. <laughs> before we put your clothes on. Right, right. And so he spent 19 years in his underwear. Wow. Wow. Yeah. These were the hardest of the hardest. And Emelina's story is tragic because this wasn't a bureaucratic rich. This was literally the people who lived on the land. And this was a young girl. She was 15 when they, when they did that. To right. Her. That's why powerful, I, I hear man. things like what Black Lives Matter says. And I'm like, you don't know. You haven't looked into the eyes Mm -hmm. of the people who suffered. Sure. Right. You, you've, it's filtered through all sorts of whatever you listen to, but I've looked at people directly in their eye. And Melina's still with us, and so right. is Angel. And I talk to them, and I've heard it directly in the timber of their voice. Yeah. I can hear their struggle. You don't know anything until right. you yeah. talk to them. Right.